Today, we're gonna to talk about the emotionally unavailable man. Now, when we talk about emotional availability, I think it's important to really dive into intimacy. And intimacy is into me you see. I mean, I'm gonna repeat that. Into me you see. Do you see me? Do you see my soul? Do you see my spirit? Do you see who I am as a person? That's really what emotional intimacy all is all about. And yet today, Unlike any other time in history, we as humans are experiencing artificial intimacy. That's right, artificial intimacy. In fact, there was an article I read in uh, Psychology Today about artificial, int artificial intimacy, and I wanted to lean into that to get deeper into this conversation. So give me a moment to read this to everyone. It said, when COVID-19 pandemic sent so many people into work from home, isolation, it funneled much of our social interactions onto the internet. Children learned via Zoom classrooms, colleagues met on Microsoft Teams, and, and we buy almost everything online. Think about it, do you buy everything online? I know I do. And friendships unfold on Facebook, Instagram, FaceTime, WhatsApp, and the once quarantine started, and once quarantine started following, there was house party. The need to socialize by app inadvertently uh, hastened the dawning of a new age, the age of artificial intimacy. So why I wanna talk about this today, because I, you know, I'm gonna share based on my observations, I believe over 50% of women find themselves in a relationship that's either a cyber relationship or it's almost a non-existent relationship. And what I mean to say is there is so much communicating via our smartphones, via text messaging. Um, and, and in some cases, I've talked to women who have never, they've been communicating with someone for years whom they've never met, they've never FaceTime. it's only text messaging. And even on those occasions where they have met someone, most of their dialogue is via text messaging and it isn't in person. And I made a note here, I wanna share something. Artificial intimacy has skewed what true intimacy is, is about. And more importantly, what about being in a day-to-day -day relationship with someone so, who's emotionally unavailable? So here's the thing, I wanted to put in a box for a moment the artificial intimacy that I believe over 50% of women who are single, looking for love in the over 40 category are experiencing. These include the long distance relationships uh, because it inherently, because there's no face to face time, it's difficult to build intimacy. But what about those people that you do see day to day? What's happening there when it comes to intimacy and emotional availability? So here's a question I want everybody to ask themselves. I'm gonna, I'm gonna repeat this. So I want anyone to, this begs the question, what, if you find yourself, oh, but well, let me preface this first. If you find yourself in a relationship with someone who's either emotionally constipated, emotionally unavailable, unable to truly create intimacy with you. Remember I said in the beginning, intimacy is into me, you see. It begs the question, why am I attracted to the emotionally unavailable man? I want to repeat that. Everyone write this down, even if you have to pause this. Why am I attracted to the emotionally unavailable man? And the further, the next question to ask yourself, what part of me is emotionally unavailable or worse, what part of me is willing to accept a relationship that doesn't fill my needs? What part of me is willing to accept a relationship that doesn't fill my needs? See, here we got two forces going on. We have, you know, it's interesting. We are now more connected to human beings more than ever before because of our devices. For those of us who are baby boomers or Gen X, do you remember the time when you didn't even have an answering machine? Do you remember when you had a rotary dial phone? Do you remember that when you have to wait for a telephone call to connect with someone? You know, and then you got a pager so somebody could page you. And then you had one of those calling cards. So if you need to call someone, you'd run to a phone booth. Does anyone remember phone booths? And you dial someone. 
And now we find ourselves attached to our smartphones, connected all the time, connected through social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube even. Well, YouTube's a great place to learn things. So I don't put YouTube in the social media category. But we're connected with people, and yet are we really feeling a sense of fulfillment? So it, a byproduct of COVID created this dynamic more so than ever before. And I think what's happened since then is there's even a lack of intimacy in relationships. See, the problem is, is most humans don't know how to build intimacy in a relationship. Most humans don't know how to properly communicate their feelings. And when I said earlier, women might, um, agree to relationships that are unfulfilled is because oftentimes they don't believe they can get anything better. See, there's a distressing lack of self-worth here in the United States and all around the world. You know, we are suffering from, you know, and let me say this, let me say it a different way. Dating triggers the number one emotional health issue most everybody is faced with is, I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, and I'm not likable. In fact, it's the reason why I wrote my book. Folks that know my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. By the way, there's a link below to get a copy of my book. You know, when we are suffering on the inside, we will accept relationships that lack true intimacy. So how do you build intimacy with someone? Because you can only ask the question, why are, you, why are you attracted to an emotionally unavailable man? That's a question for yourself. I believe it's based on the fact that most people would rather have a mediocre relationship than no relationship whatsoever. Does that feel true for any of you? I've noticed this to be true for many people. So how do we build intimacy, folks? It requires going deeper than the surface. It requires starting by leading by example, by actually expressing your feelings to someone. This is what I talk about being vulnerable, being authentic, being transparent. Laying your cards on the table very early on in the dating process. What does that look like? That means talking about your past relationships because if you're meeting a total stranger, you know nothing about them. And so you have to unpack their paths to get a sense of who they are today. And then establishing your standards. That's what I call the rules of engagement. But how do you build intimacy? It starts by asking deeper questions. If you're not familiar with the book, Emotional Intimacy by Robert Masters, I highly recommend checking this out. This will give you a sense of what is emotional intimacy because the fact is, is most men, they might be emotionally constipated and constipated means they're bottled up. Doesn't mean that they're incapable of it. It means they're bottled up. They need someone to help draw it out of them. And ladies, you are the best container for that to happen. We don't get that from our male friends. Folks, you might know that I lost a child and that was probably after losing my son, my closest friends and I had probably the most intense, intimate conversations of our lives. And we'd known each other for 50 years. Yet it took losing a child to open us up, to actually start talking about our feelings with one another. Don't wait to have some traumatic event happen, especially in relationships, start from the very beginning. Start from the very beginning. So what's it going to take? I'm going to tell you in a second. I got to turn on the air here. It's quite uh, hot in here. So what's it going to take? It's going to, here's the thing. Relationships today require spending as much time together in a relatively short period of time. That's right. As much time together in a relatively short period of time. Why is this? Because the reality is, is to get to know someone, you have to invest a lot of time together. But doing it in a very long, drawn out way, this way where you get some occasional companionship, you get some occasional connection, you get some occasional sex, is a very weak way of getting to know someone. And what is happening today is people are dating actively dating multiple people at the same time, and they're not giving one person a chance to actually get to know them. 
I think when two people decide to be physically intimate with one another, that's the time to at least declare that you're monogamous with one another and that you're not actively going to be in the dating marketplace, number one. I mean, one and two, I should say. And number three, spend a significant time amount of time together. But Jonathan, I only have time for one day a week for someone. Well, I want you to think about it. If you only have time for one day a week, 52 days in a course of a year, you might not really know who this person is because there's roughly, let's see, there's roughly 300 other days you're not together. But we talk on the phone and we text all the time. That is artificial intimacy. It's not real intimacy. How does intimacy get built? Folks, it happens through social activities. It happens through hobbies. It happens through um, um, social activities, hobbies, mutual interest. It happens through spending time with family and friends. It requires spending a significant amount of time together and not a, because a part-time dating experience Usually, what happens with a part-time job? You quit that job to go find a full-time job somewhere else, and men will leave you. They'll, they'll take all the goodies. They'll take all the goodies you give them. There was a, someone posted, why give wife gifts or uh, duties at girlfriend prices? Folks, men will spend minimal amount of time with you to get all the benefits from it, but that doesn't mean that they'll commit to you. A man will commit when he invests a significant amount of time with you, when the two of you are spending a significant amount of time together. Is this sinking in? I hope it is because that's where intimacy is built and intimacy is built. Emotional availability is built in the communicating of your feelings. And I don't mean how you feel about the relationship. I'm talking about the feelings of life. It's not about the doing, it's about the feeling, asking those questions, not how was your day at work? Ask the question, how did it feel today at work? How did it feel driving home? How does it feel that your, your, your child wasn't able to see you this weekend? How did that feel? Ask feeling questions if you want to evoke emotional availability from someone and anyone who rejects it is probably not someone who's capable, and we are swimming in a sea of human beings who are, who are constipated because they have childhood wounds and traumas and adult traumas that makes it almost virtually impossible for them to go any deeper than just the surface relationship. How's your day going? Did you have a good day? Most of you know my rhetoric. All right, why are you attracted to emotionally available men? Many of you would rather settle for a, a mediocre relationship than no relationship at all. That's the why. But I invite you to ask yourself, why are you attracted to an emotionally available man? What part of you is emotionally unavailable? And why are you willing to accept a relationship that doesn't meet your needs? Now, again, listen. If you're in a situation where it's, you require codependency, and what I mean to say is you are dependent upon someone else, financially most likely, well, then there's a trade-off. You might have to trade that off, emotional intimacy. But I don't believe that most of you need a man to take care of you. You want a partnership in life, and it starts from the very beginning. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. Please post a comment below. If you like what I had to sh share, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and check out all the links below if you want to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right.